I live on the west coast of Canada. Imagine waking up one morning and seeing a giraffe walk through my front yard. Seeing my best friend fight off a grizzly attack in my front yard as he protects me. All animations I created recently with a product called Sora. Today we're going to talk about one of the most exciting new technologies in the world, something called Sora. I'm Ron Brown. This is Tech for Senior where we help seniors understand technology and introduce them to video creation, which is now so simple. You just ask it to create what you want, and it's done. Now, Sora is made by OpenAI, the same company that created ChatGPT. Now, if you've used ChatGPT before, you know it can write letters, recipes, or even jokes just by typing a few words. Well, imagine doing the same thing, but instead of words on a screen, you get a realistic video. That's what Sora does. It turns text into videos, and the results are truly incredible. So I've created a short video about the history of Sora with a little help from AI. I'm gonna play that video now, and at the end, we'll get together and go over some more features of Sora. Today, we are diving headfirst into the absolutely wild world of AI video generation. We're talking about a technology that is completely reshaping creativity, industry, and maybe even reality itself. So where did this all begin? Well, it really started with a massive shockwave sent from one tool, OpenAI Sora. And you know, this quote from AI creator Bilawal Shu though just nails it. Sora wasn't just another small step forward, it was a giant leap across a chasm into a totally new era of creating video. Let me tell you, when Sora was first shown off back in February 2024, it changed everything. I mean, it was making clips that were so realistic you literally couldn't tell if it was AI or something shot with a real camera. And just like that, it kicked off what pretty much everyone in tech is now calling an AI arms race. And this is where it gets really fascinating. The researchers at OpenAI, the people who built it, they didn't call it a video generator, they called it a world simulator. Think about that for a second. That means the model isn't just painting with pixels, it's actually starting to understand and copy the physics of our world. You know, how light bounces off things, how objects move and interact. Okay, so Sora threw down the gauntlet, but it's not alone in this ring, not by a long shot. Almost as soon as it was announced, the other big players jumped into the fight, and each of them came with a totally different idea of what an AI video tool should even be. And you can see this clash of philosophies right here. On one side, you have OpenAI's Sora, which really went all in on a slick, easy-to-use interface for creators, with things like timelines. And on the other side, you've got Google's VO2, which was all about raw power and cinematic quality right out of the box, even understanding complex camera directions from day one. And this isn't just a two-horse race. The whole field is specializing. You've got Klang out of China, which is just nailing motion realism. Filmmakers love it. Then there's Runway Gen 3, which is like the speed demon of the group. Perfect for cranking out social media content super fast. Sora kind of sits in the middle, trying to be the go-to for high-quality storytelling. But it does have some well-known weaknesses with its physics engine that creators have been pointing out. So, okay, we've seen all these amazing clips, but what's really going on under the hood? And maybe more importantly, what's it actually like to use one of these things when you get your hands on it? You know, when the hype meets reality. All right, let's get a little nerdy for a second. The key to how Sora thinks is in how it sees video. It uses this thing called a compression network to chop up raw video into what it calls space-time patches. Basically, you can think of these as the words or tokens that a language model uses. It's the same idea, but for video, and it lets the AI learn from tons of video data really efficiently. So, the tech is brilliant, but here's the million dollar question. Does it actually work every time you hit generate? To get a dose of reality, one user on Reddit decided to find out for all of us. They ran 32 experiments with prompts from the community on launch day to see what really happens. And the results? Well, they were a real reality check. Turns out, you only get something good on the first try about half the time, 53% to be exact. 
The other 47% of the time, the videos were kind of jumbled, the prompt was too complicated for the AI to figure out, or just got blocked by the safety filters. So, what do we learn from this? Well, a clear pattern started to show up about what makes a good prompt. First off, keep it short. Under 120 words seems to be the sweet spot. Be super specific, use really descriptive vivid language, and for goodness sake, stay away from anything copyrighted or sensitive. It turns out, simple is often better than complex. Okay, so this brings us to the big picture. This tech is, without a doubt, a double-edged sword. On one side, you've got these incredible creative possibilities. But on the other, well, there are some pretty serious risks that whole industries are already having to face. Get a load of this number, $800 million. That's how much filmmaker Tyler Perry's planned studio expansion was worth. He put that on hold because of Sora, flat out saying he was worried about jobs. And he might not be wrong. A recent study found that a whopping 75% of film companies using AI have already eliminated jobs. But that's just one side of the coin. The flip side is this amazing promise of, you know, democratizing creativity. As Gen AI artist Leo Kadiev says here, it means that you don't need a Hollywood budget anymore to tell a high quality story. Your imagination is what really counts now. And if you want to see the danger in action, look no further. A researcher from Italy showed just how easy it was to get around Sora's safety filters. She started with something totally innocent, a man with a red necklace. Then, using Sora's own remix feature, she just kept tweaking it, nudging the AI step by step by step until it created something incredibly graphic and violent. That is a huge hole in the safety net. So where do we go from here? The thing is, the pace of change here is just, it's mind-blowing. Right when the world was finally wrapping its head around the first version of Sora, the next generation was already in the works, and it's bringing a whole new level of capability. Just look at this timeline. It really puts the speed of this into perspective. You go from the first preview in February 2024 to a public release in December, and then boom, less than a year later, in September 2025, they're already announcing Sora 2. And this next version, it's adding synchronized audio and dialogue. That's a total game changer. So all of this leaves us with one massive lingering question. Are these tools just automating our creativity, or are they actually unlocking something fundamentally human? a new way for anyone, anywhere, to bring their imagination to life? That's the big question we're all going to have to answer as we head into this wild new future of AI video. So exactly what is Sora? Well, Sora is a new kind of artificial intelligence. It's what we call a text-to-video generator. That means it takes a short description you type in, usually called a prompt, and turns it into a moving video clip. It understands objects, motion, lighting, and even how the camera should move. It's like having your own personal movie studio right inside your computer. And you don't have to be a video creator to use it. Well, now you might be wondering, how can Sora possibly know what a video should look like? Behind the scenes, it uses a special kind of AI model called a transformer. The same that thing that powers ChatGPT. But instead of learning from words, Sora learns from millions of real video clips. It studies how things move, how shades change, and how people or animals behave naturally. So when you type in a request, like place a giraffe in my front yard, it uses that knowledge to predict what the video should look like, frame by frame. It's kind of like watching a super smart painter draw 24 pictures every second, and then playing them back as a movie. Why does Sora matter for seniors? Now here's why this is especially exciting for us. Many of us grew up in times when making a video meant hauling around a camcorder and dealing with tapes. Today we can do it with a few simple words. Sora could help seniors share their life stories in a visual way create family history projects, make fun videos for social media, or maybe family reunions, or even use it to learn new hobbies from gardening to cooking. It's a creative tool that opens up video making for everyone, not just professionals. So as we sum this up, of course we have to be careful. AI can be misused. People could make fake videos that look real. And that's why OpenAI is adding watermarks and safety filters so we can tell what's AI generated. And remember, not everything you see is real. 
Still, if used responsibly, Sora could be one of the most creative tools ever made. So that's Sora, and AI turns your imagination into video. It's still being tested, but soon should change how we create, learn, and share our stories. If you enjoyed this creation, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and join us each week on Tech for Senior as we explore how technology can make life easier and more fun. Thanks for watching, and remember, keep learning and stay curious. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Thank you.